Welcome back to the channel everybody. Today I have a very, very exciting video for you guys. And today we are introducing one of our newest members to the team, Mr. Zinc. His name is Bryce. Bryce, first of all, I know everybody on the team has already said this, but welcome to the team. And could you do us much. a little favor and tell everybody that is new to the YouTube channel that doesn't really know you yet a little bit about yourself before we go into today's topic. Um, my name is Bryce. I am uh, relatively new to trading. I wouldn't say that I'm an experienced vet. Uh, just about four years under my belt. Uh, I started off with just an initial $1,500 investment back when I was 18. Um, 22 right now. Uh, when I started, I originally lost all of that and then paper trade for some time. Uh, I didn't really read any books or watch any videos or have guidance. I just kind of learned some patterns myself, found patterns that I liked and um, paper traded them, found out that they were successful. And I guess that's just why I'm at the point where I am right now. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, you know, we all have those stories about losing an account earlier in the days, or at least encountering some kind of struggle. So it's nice to hear that. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm very excited to do an interview with you, which you guys can expect on the channel in the next couple of weeks. Um, and, you, you know, going into those trading strategies that you did test and found out on the paper trading account, today we're actually going to be covering a very interesting strategy that nobody else at OBR really utilizes. So it's very refreshing to see somebody come in with this. And it's an IV straddle based strategy. So. Could you tell us a little bit about that before we go into the details? I will, yes. So basically, IV is the, it's one of the measurements on options if you take a look. So you have your Greeks, obviously, um, Delta, Delta, Gamma, Theta, all those, yes. all that fun stuff. And then you have your implied volatility, you have your volume, and then you have your open interest. Implied volatility is basically a measure of the probability that a stock has at being in X strike price by expiration in correlation to how many people are buying that option. So basically what happens is when you have a catalyst like earnings um, for SPY, for example, when Powell talks, the IV spikes dramatically and that essentially drives up the option price because more people are buying in, um, there's less supply as well as it cancels out the theta decay of the option. Okay, awesome. So kind of walk us through what you're initially looking for when you're looking for you know something that may have higher IV, how you're positioning yourself in order to capture that move in IV. So when I first started, what I was um, able to do here was typically you'd be able to predict the direction of the stock leading up to their earnings. Um, however, in these past few weeks, as you can see, we've been relatively choppy with SPY. We've made new 52 week lows, had a relatively strong recuperation and then a new 52 week low. So it's sideways trading right now. So I've altered my trading plan to uh, incorporate straddles where I win on both sides, whether we chop or if we have sharp moves in either direction. What you look for is we have our earnings calendar here. What you look for is these these top names reporting earnings every week. So like Zoom, NVIDIA is a really big one, Snowflake, Costco, Alibaba, Best Buy, Dix. You have all these large companies reporting earnings. You take a look at their flow and they all have enormous amounts of options being bought. Like NVIDIA, for example, probably upwards of 10K for each strike price because people are entering into these positions expecting a large move off of earnings. Right. So what we're doing is buying a straddle on both sides. So the price action before the earnings is reported goes up and down. We vary, maybe we, for NVIDIA, for example, we climbed about 7% the day of their earnings. Um, they reported earnings after hours, obviously. They dropped a significant amount. We're playing the run up to earnings, selling before they report earnings and then cashing out. Got it, got it. So, okay, you identify a name that has earnings. You're looking to play the move up to earnings. How are you going about the, uh, so, you know, selecting which contracts to purchase for that straddle? Uh, so what I do is I'll take a look at the chart here and I will, set price targets for myself. So in the video, for example, we touched down at 156. That's our 52 week low. 
Um, we bounced all the way up to 180. So I like to take price targets around that, um, those price targets that I set, as well as looking at um, what premiums have about the same, or what strike prices have about the same premium. So for Got example, um, if they're both $15 out of the money on both sides, then they'll typically have the same premium and that will that's what will get me in the option. Very interesting. So when you're looking for that, um, is there anything you're looking for in specific for like an IV number or are you considering any other of the Greeks? Um, I don't, when I'm trading options other than IV straddles, I typically look at the delta value. I like a delta value from 0.3 to 0.5. Okay. However, when I'm trading IV trials, it doesn't really matter what the other Greek values are. I am looking for IV. Um, this is just based off experience. I can't give you like an equation of how I know what the IV is going to be. But based off of my past experience, I look for an IV at about 100 to 150% and expect that to climb to 300, anywhere upwards of 300%. Interesting. Okay. So I think we're kind of getting the grasp here. Could you walk us through, I know you, you had this NVIDIA trade yesterday, which a lot of people were very happy about. Um, could you yep. walk us through perhaps, you know, this example and one more? So for NVIDIA, for example, what I did, as I just said, I assigned these price targets on NVIDIA at 180 and 150. I also took a closer in the money straddle at 175 and 145, uh, 155, I mean. Um, so I entered right about, Friday morning, or not Friday morning, yesterday morning, two days ago, I entered right about here. So NVIDIA had a sharp drop down and then we recuperated all that right back up to about 171, 170. Um, so I had a 175 call and a 145 put at this point. What I did was I held on to both contracts throughout the whole day. If we chop back and forth, they mostly stayed constant, but because the IV is increasing, both options are increasing as well. So a big example here is just a question for you that you don't have to answer. It's kind of rhetorical. What's stopping me from buying a spread or a straddle on SPY? It's the theta decay that is canceling out my gains. So say I wanted to buy for example, let's say a 394 put on SPY and a 410 call on SPY. Okay. Unless that has a drastic move in one direction, I'm most likely going to lose because the theta decay is just going to kill my options. Got it. But because For, of the earnings that's upcoming, the theta is canceled out by the increase in IV. Correct. Very interesting. So that's why we're able to get away from, or that's why we're able to get these straddles and not worry about the theta decay. That's very cool. That's very cool. How did you go about learning this? So I started with back in December of last year, I realized this pattern. The first thing I did was I realized it with a company named BP. That was BP and Pfizer. For, uh, they reported earnings in the same week. I originally started buying the options at 330 and selling them at 358 because so many people were entering into these lotto positions, trying to swing them overnight, seeing if they could get a massive move on the stock price. So I would buy at 330 and the IV would pump my contracts up 20 to 30% by the end of the day. And I would just sell them off and not worry about losing all the money that I put in yeah. from risking it over earnings. So then what, and, oh yeah, continue. And then that adapted to me realizing that, it, hey, if I buy a week in advance, two, three days in advance, I can play the IV run up on larger companies reporting their earnings. Got it. So by extending the time frame, you were able to buy bigger companies. Is that because of the premiums? Uh, correct. So for larger companies, if you take a look at the flow, there's large buyers stepping in weeks, two weeks, three weeks before companies report earnings just because the premiums are usually cheaper. Um, if you find like the sweet spot, so for smaller companies like BP, Pfizer, um, Dix, Best Buy, those earnings, the best time to buy those is usually the week of. For NVIDIA or Tesla or Amazon, Google, the best time to buy those is usually a week before, two weeks before. 
Got it. And you just have to predict the move that you think is going to happen. Understood. Understood. So we don't want to give away too much of your secret sauce here that you have with this strategy, sure. but is there any other tips that you would feel comfortable sharing with the YouTube audience? Any other tips? Let's see here. I would say if you're looking for just a safe play, if you take a look at these earning calendars that get, that get put out every week, just pick the top, the top names on each column. They put the largest companies at the top for you. All you got to do is look at these premiums for each company and then you want to see which one has the most volume for nvidia for example i wouldn't go buying like a 172.5 call one you want to stay in like even increments so i'll pull up my nvidia contracts right now and take a look for you for nvidia you don't want to be buying like a 149 put 147 put because the volume on those is about a fifth to an eighth of the volume of the round numbers like 145 150 155 160. okay you want to be able to buy options that you will be able to unload at any point got it so it needs to have a high volume yes correct do you, do you look at open interest at all uh the open interest doesn't really factor into this no i would okay. say so awesome well Bryce, thank you very, very much for coming on. I'm very, very happy to have you on for your first video. I know it is just the first of many, and I know a lot of people will take a lot of value out of this video, so thank you. Absolutely, thank you for having me. Absolutely, awesome. Well, uh, everybody, if you're curious to learn a little bit more from Bryce, Mr. Zinc, be sure to check out the link in the bio for the seven day free trial or to join up, and uh, we'll see you in the Discord.